So he says here, the spirit rested upon them and they prophesied and did not cease. Verse 26 says, but there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad and the name of the other Medad. And the spirit rested upon them. And they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. So here we see Moses chose 70 people. 68 of them actually show up to the tabernacle. Like, okay, well, we're appointed. We're here. God pours out his spirit. But Moses had written down the names of 70 people and saying, these are the people that want to help me. They didn't show up, but you know what happened? God still poured out his spirit on those 70 that were chosen. And what happens then is, it says here, verse 27, there ran a young man and told Moses, said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. So he's like, tell, he's like, hey, these guys are prophesying in the camp. Right? They're not here, but they're out there prophesying. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, my Lord, Moses, forbid them. So Joshua is just getting all like, hey, they should have been here. Why weren't they here? Tell them to stop preaching in the camp. They're supposed to be here with us, you know, receiving the, the, the spirit here and not doing their own thing or whatever, right? But look how Moses answered in verse number 29. And Moses said unto him, envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? So he's saying, you know what would just be great, Joshua. If, if all the Lord's people were prophets and then that God's spirit was on everybody, how much more then would be done? But see, that's, that's not happening. But would God that it would happen? And I think the reason why it's not happening as much is because we do need to prepare our vessels so that we can be meat for the master's use. Moses was told to choose people. Because God wants people who are going to be faithful. He wants people who are going to be servants. He wants people who are going to be humble. He wants people who are going to serve. Not make it all about them. Not be greedy of filthy lucre. Not have all of these other flaws that are going to destroy the work. If God's going to take the time and pour out his spirit on someone, he says, you know what? I want these people to do a good job. I don't want them to bring my name down. I want them to exalt my name. So that's why you have... You know, in, in the New Testament, you have the qualifications of a pastor. And here we have Moses deciding and choosing, hey, look at the elders of the people. Look at the people who are well-respected. Look at the people who have already been determined to be faithful and make them to be your helpers, to be your servants, to be your ministers. And then God's pouring out his spirit on them. But there's also this, this concept, and turn if you go to Judges chapter 3, of so what? They're not in our camp. If God's Spirit's on them and they're preaching, then amen. Now, they should have been there. They should have gone. I mean, it would have been right for them to do, but you know what? If God's going to pour out a Spirit on people and they're going to preach, then amen. How are they going to say anything bad if God's Spirit is on them and they're preaching the Word of God? <laughs> they're going to be preaching the truth. Judges chapter 3 and we see this happen a lot in the book of Judges. Verse number 9, the Bible says, And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel, who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel and went out to war. And the Lord delivered Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed against Cushan Rishathaim. And I don't know why that name had to be in there twice, probably just to screw up people trying to read it. <laughs> Just kidding. Flip over to Judges chapter 6. Because the only other thing, the, the, the other main thing you're going to see, I, I mentioned what you're going to see very, very frequently is people preaching, right? People going out and speaking and preaching. That is number one. And number two is going to be people going out to war and fighting battles. When the, when, when the Spirit of God comes upon people, Spirit of the Lord, it's preparing them for a battle. So we need the Lord to be upon us to preach to prophesy, and we need the Lord to come upon us to help us in our time of need, like with a spiritual battle. Now, obviously, these are physical battles going on. We're dealing in spiritual battles, and that's the whole teaching here and understanding is that God's going to be there to be your defender and to be there to help you to uh, even just to know how to give you the knowledge and the wisdom on how to proceed.